Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Data Mining Modeling Using R. Uh, this is our uh, fifth lecture and uh, we were covering, uh, we started visualization techniques in the previous lecture. So uh, let us start. So we uh, stopped at, at uh, you know R studio where we were doing some of the examples. So let us uh, go back and complete some of them and then we will come back and start our discussion on our next uh, particular uh, plot that is on that is heat maps. So let us go back. So again we will have to do some of the loadings and uh, importing data set. We will have to uh, reload the library and everything. So uh, let us uh, load this particular library XLSX. So once it is loaded. So mainly uh, in this particular lecture we would be using uh, used cars XLS file. So let us uh, import that particular data set. Let us see here. So let us import it. So we will rerun uh, the same lines that we did in the last and the previous uh, lecture. So we can see that uh, there are 79 observation 11 variables in the environment section and then uh, let us recreate this age variable as discussed in the previous lecture. Let us append it to the data frame and let us uh, subset the data frame right and let us also let us also uh, convert these variables. Now you might remember in the last session uh, we had uh, eliminated one of the observation which was uh, which was actually outlier. So let us uh, perform the same operation again. So this was the observation. Let us take back up and then again eliminate the observation. Now we want to have a look at the uh, data set. This is the data set you can see now df178 observation and 9 variables. So let us uh, go back to the point where we stopped in the previous lecture. So we were going through some of the examples of, of box plots. So I think uh, what I remember is uh, we completed uh, one box plot. So let us uh, discuss the another one. So this particular box plot is between uh, kilometer and uh, the categorical price. So uh, let us look at the range of kilometer because we would have to specify that in the y limit because this particular variable is going to be on the y axis. So let us do that. You can see the range and uh, you can see the y limit that we have specified in this particular line is actually covering uh, this uh, range for kilometer. So now let us create the box plot. You can see this like the last uh, uh, like the last session, last lecture. This is the box plot that we have. So other uh, understanding of the box plot remains same uh, like the last session. If we want to display mean as well, then that can also be done. But for that, we will have to compute the mean first. So uh, this is the code that we discussed in the previous section as well. So means are computed, you can see means variable have been created, has been created, uh, means one variable has been created and two values are there. Now let us plot these two points and you can see the plot. Now here also if you want to compare how uh, the uh, kilometer variable, km variable, uh, variable is actually distributed for two groups uh, 0 and 1, group 0 and uh, group 1, as you can see. So uh, in comparison to our, the previous example that we saw, there is the, both these boxes are uh, closer to each other, but uh, uh, group 0 is slightly on the lower side, the distribution is slightly on the lower side and there is some difference between box 0 and box 1. So this kind of uh, box plots as we discussed can also help us and understand the difference between groups and we can also help uh, you know decide whether we need to include any interaction variable uh, because of uh, you know if we see a significant difference in, in, in the distribution of data in two groups 
so we will uh, have more discussion on interaction and uh, other related concepts in coming lectures. So, let us uh, plot another one. So, this one is between age and the categorical price that we have these two variables. So, let us uh, look at the range because again this is going to be plotted on the y axis you can see the range is 2 to 10. So, you can see the limit is also specified uh, appropriately and uh, other things uh, remaining uh, similar. So, you can see these two plots this one plot and we can also calculate means and plot uh, these two means for these two bo box plots. Uh, let us look at the graphic. Now, in this case, this is in this case, you would see the bo boxes are, uh, you know, very, you know, uh, in the in the same range. Those these two boxes, they are in the in the same range. But you would see the median uh, is uh, is coinciding with the first quartile in the box zero, and the box one it is uh, separated. Uh, you can also see the mean, which are uh, means are also looking uh, at the same value. So therefore, very close, uh, very little difference between. Uh, these two distribution for these two groups, groups and zero with respect to age. Now, let us do another example. This is between uh, showroom price and uh, categorical price. So, let us uh, go through this range. You can see appropriately specified in the this particular line box plot code and we can plot the box plots and then means let us plot them. Now, let us look at this particular graphic this looks much interesting. You can see these two boxes a much bigger difference. You can see for group 0 you would see that price is uh, showroom price was uh, you know showroom price distribution is on the uh, lower side and for group 1 uh, the showroom price is on the higher side. So, that is uh, nothing unusual. Uh, this is actually because of the way categorical price has been created. The showroom price is actually following that uh, you know indicating the same difference right because both are related to pricing of the cars. So, therefore, uh, this difference uh, this separation is very clearly uh, visible or depicted in the box plot because both these variables are related to price. Now, uh, let us come back uh, to another plot, let us come back to our slides. Uh, so, heat maps is the our next uh, discussion. Uh, so, heat maps again uh, they are uh, they can they are another uh, you know they can be combined with the basic plots and distribution plots. Uh, the display numeric variables using some graphics based on uh, 2D tables, we will see how that is possible. Then we all we can also use some of the color schemes uh, that could be used to indicate values. So, different colors uh, different colors uh, and different shades of colors uh, could actually be used to indicate a different range of value. Let us say if a value is li lying between 0 and 0.1. So, one particular shade could be used if the value is lying between 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 a darker shade could be used if the value is lying between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 a little bit more darker color could be used. So, therefore, in that uh, in that fashion a color ordering you know we can use the color scheme and uh, that can uh, the uh, you know uh, diff the intensity of the shade that can help us indicate whether the value is on the higher side or, or, or on the lower side. So, uh, 2D tables any kind of data that we can have uh, and that we can actually have in 2D uh, you know table format a table format. So, therefore, that can be displayed using heat maps and the color coding can actually help us in understanding the data and some relevant uh, insights developing some relevant insights. Now, as we talked about in the previous lecture as well that our human brains are uh, capable of uh, doing uh, you know uh, much higher degree of visual processing. So, therefore, uh, heat maps can really be helpful uh, especially when we are dealing with large amount of data. So, we have large number of value, uh, values it might be difficult for us to find out uh, uh, different things different insights uh, about the data. Therefore, heat maps this uh, color things can actually help us in building our visual perception. 
now those visual perception can be carried forward for subsequent analysis and used for uh, then later on used for uh, formal analysis now as you can see in the in the slide uh, second point about heat maps is useful to visualize correlation and missing values so uh, as we talked about because different uh, colored states are going to be used therefore uh, in the correlation matrix uh, in the in the correlation matrix if there is a higher value if there is a high degree of correlation between uh, two uh, uh, particular numerical variables so that can be uh, shown with the uh, uh, with the darker state and if there is low degree of correlation uh, low value low value of correlation coefficient then uh, a lighter state could actually be selected so therefore uh, the different states intensity of these uh, colored states that can actually help us uh, in finding out which variables are highly correlated and which uh, variables are uh, have are having a low correlation values right similarly missing values can also be spotted so if we have uh, the data generally uh, as we talked about in the starting uh, lectures that uh, generally data is uh, displayed in matrix format or in, in the tabular format so therefore that data can actually be uh, displayed and if there are any missing values right so uh, they can be represented using uh, you know whiter white color and the uh, and the cells where the values are there can be uh, represented uh, as the darker color or the black color so uh, it would be easier to specify missing value we can also we can so heat maps can also be used uh, to help us understand the missing uh, ness in a particular data set if there are too many missing values right that can also be spotted if there are duplicate rows and columns probably uh, because of the colored states if, if, if the colored state is uh, very similar for two particular rows or two particular columns or multiple uh, rows or multiple columns so we can again do a manual uh, uh, check uh, to find out whether the values are whether it's a duplicate row or column so uh, heat maps can help us uh, uh, finding these problems so let's go back to uh, our studio so uh, first we'll cover the uh, correlation matrix so uh, heat map can be used for you know creating a correlation table heat map so first we need to compute correlation so in this case you would see that uh, uh, in the data frame in data frame that we have data set that we have let's have a relook right so you can see that uh, uh, column 1 5 and 8 1 and then 5 and then 8 uh, have been left out in the from the correlation uh, uh, function uh, reason being obvious that these are uh, factor variable or categorical variable so that the correlation value it requires numerical variable so let's compute the uh, correlation values uh, among the remaining numerical variables as you can see a correlation matrix has been displayed there uh, this matrix is symmetrical so upper half is symmetrical to the uh, uh, lower half uh, you know uh, this diagonal is there all the values are one so this value one is between the same variable so the, the variable is going to be 100 percent correlated with uh, itself therefore these values are one other values uh, are showing the particular correlation coefficient now we can ha have a different kind of uh, uh, table for the same data this is the function same num so you can see different kind of depiction here so uh, you can see the variable names here in the row and in the column also variable names are there so the uh, the one representing the 100% uh, correlation and you would see uh, the some notations are given in the uh, in the at the bottom of this particular output see uh, this uh, single code is used for values lying between 0 and 0 0.3 dot is being used for values uh, lying between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 uh, comma is being used for values lying between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 plus is being used for values lying between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 asterisk is being used for values between 0 0.9 and 0 0.95 and the b is being used for values between 0 0.95 and 1 so you can see uh, there is one uh, we can see one comma here and then several dots 
you can see one comma and several dots. So, this comma value might be somewhere between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 and dots could be somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So, this is quite similar to what we were talking about the heat maps. So, heat map will show the same thing using colors. So, in this case, uh, this particular function simnum is displaying uh, different, different values using different symbols. So, uh, now uh, because uh, the uh, there is a symmetry in the matrix, so let us uh, get rid of uh, the uh, one of one of the uh, triangle. So, in this case we just want to keep the lower triangle. So, upper triangular value have been assigned as N A right. Now, let us create the correlation table heat map. So, this is the code. And this is the code. So, you can see the first uh, argument in this particular function heat map is the matrix itself. Then there are some other arguments. Uh, symmetry is in this case is uh, uh, true. Uh, color we have specified as gray color. So, we want to have uh, we want to use the gray palette. Uh, we will understand more about uh, color color schemes in R uh, later in this uh, lecture. So, this, uh, uh, this particular function gray dot colors can be used. Uh, to create a number of uh, gray, a number of uh, uh, gray sets. Uh, for example, we want to create thousand sets uh, starting from value ranging from 0 0.8 and ending at 0 0.2. So the values can be specified between 0 to 1 range, but we are is, uh, uh, restricting ourselves to 0 0.8 to uh, 0.2. Uh, scale. So we are not scaling uh, the data that we have because this is already correlation uh, values. So they are already uh, standardized. Uh, margins we have specified. So, let us execute this particular code. You can see the output. This is the graphic that we have. So, in this graphic you can clearly see that uh, diagonal values they are in the darker shade because uh, there is uh, uh, the each variable is going to be 100 percent correlated to itself. Therefore, these values are uh, being represented by the darker shade having perfect correlation. Other values you would see uh, a slightly uh, lighter uh, shades of gray uh, have been used, but the intensity of the uh, shade in, uh, indicate higher value and uh, uh, higher intensity indicates higher value and lower indicates lower intensity of the shade in, uh, indicates lower value. So, these uh, whitish uh, kind of light gray kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, you know uh, rectangles or squares uh, shown here. Uh, the correlation values uh, for the corresponding variables, pair of variables uh, are on the lower side and the uh, slightly darker for example, this particular one between price and SR price. That's this we can understand that showroom price is going to be highly correlated with the price of the car. So, therefore, uh, the correlation is value correlation value is going to be on the higher side and similarly, the color is on the uh, you know this is higher in higher shade of higher intensity shade of uh, gray color. So, this can actually help us visualizing, visualizing in terms of finding out which particular pairs of variables are highly correlated. So, for example, we can say price and SR price, we can also say SR price and airbag, we can also say uh, kilometers and age right. Similarly, price and airbag. So, these uh, particular set of variables they seem to be uh, highly correlated with SR price and price being very highly correlated. Similarly, uh, the data matrix uh, or missing value heat map uh, can be depicted uh, using heat map function. So, uh, what we are trying to do is here is uh, so, generally a missing value heat map is actually uh, if the value is present uh, it is generally so shown in the darker state, if the value is absent then it is uh, shown in the uh, you know lighter state. So, that generally uh, you know the color that is used is black for the uh, value being present and white for value being absent. So, uh, but in this case uh, uh, we are not doing that because uh, the data set that we have all the values are present. So, instead of that uh, what we are trying to do here, here is to just show you uh, to give you the feel of uh, heat map in the data matrix case missing value heat map case uh, for first 6 records and then later on for all the records uh, we are depicting uh, different uh, shades of gray color uh, for different actual values. So, depending on the value uh, different uh, color shades would actually be shown. 
So for first six records, uh, we are going to run this code. You can see head is the function that has been used for to uh, to actually subset the uh, data frame for first six records. You can see gray colors. Uh, the scheme is uh, this slightly different uh, scale. Now we want to standardize this scale uh, because uh, uh, column wise. So column wise scaling is going to be done. Margins are are also mentioned there. So let us run this code, you can see for first 6 observations, uh, we can see for uh, different columns, uh, different variables and the values. So for example, uh, you can see the air back, it uh, looks white and the color is uh, predomin predominantly uh, white, you can see because the most of the values in air back, they were actually 0. So therefore, uh, this uh, whiter uh, shade of uh, gray color has been used. Uh, similarly, you can see this uh, fifth uh, row, this is mainly in the, uh, you know, many cells, many squares in this, uh, many cells in this uh, particular row, they are in the uh, darker shade. So, uh, higher values are there in this particular row. <coughs> similarly, you can see that KM column, this is slightly on the darker side. So, that means higher values are there in the KM column for KM variable. Similarly, we can create the heat map for all the rows, for all the records. So this is the heat map. You can see now the uh, uh, now that the uh, this is uh, this is the number in, num, uh, indexing for the rows one to seventy nine because we had seventy nine observations. You can see that. So uh, depending on the values in uh, depending on the values in each cell. Uh, the shade has been selected. Had it been for missing value, actual missing value heat map, so we would add, uh, we would see uh, either black or white, white in the places where the value is absent and the black in the places where the value is present. So if we want to uh, do a similar thing for in the in for our data set, uh, the whole uh, uh, table is going to look black because there is no missing value. Now uh, that brings us uh, to our uh, next uh, discussion. So let us uh, come back to our slides. Uh, so next discussion is on multidimensional visualization. So most of the uh, uh, most of the visualization uh, techniques uh, or plots uh, that we talked about they were mainly 2D, uh, two dimensional. Now uh, we can also have uh, some features which, which can actually add to the uh, 2D plots uh, that we have uh, gone through till now. And uh, in a way, they would be multidimensional because some of the features uh, that uh, are mentioned in this particular sl uh, slide, uh, these features are going to give that multidimensional feel. Uh, so our visual perception can be multidimensional, uh, you know, using these features on 2D plots. So you can see multiple panels. If we can have multiple panels, so uh, if we use just one scatter, for example, if we use if we use just one scatter plot, only two variables can be uh, selected. Only two variables can be visualized. But if we have multiple panels, right? So we can have uh, you know pairwise uh, scatter plots for many variables, and we at in one go we can look at uh, different variables and the relationships and the information overlap and many other things. So, uh, multiple panels can uh, give us the uh, multidimensional look using the 2D plots. Similarly, color. So, color uh, coding can be done for different groups of a categorical variable. So, that will also give us the multidimensional and it will help us in building our visual perception. Size and shape. So, uh, uh, different size and shape uh, for points that are being depicted or shown or whatever graphic that is being uh, uh, generated, different size and shapes uh, can be uh, can actually be used and therefore uh, that can help us give that multidimensional feel from in the 2D plot. Animation can be done uh, which can actually help us in visualizing the changes over time. Uh, some operations like aggregation of data, rescaling, and uh, interactive, uh, you know, visualization that can also be done to have that multidimensional feel. Now, uh, when we create uh, real uh, multidimensional visualization like 3D plots, uh, their visual perception is not that much uh, clear because it, uh, it is difficult for us to 
uh, learn something uh, learn something from 3d plots so uh, it is more easier for us to uh, because of the the way we have been learning uh, over the years uh, our learning uh, with respect to 2d plots from 2d plots is much better than in higher dimensional than from higher dimensional plot now the main idea is again uh, for these features and the operations that we talked about the main idea being help build visual perception that is going to help us in support uh, in the subsequent analysis so uh, let's go back to our studio and we'll go through some of the plots so uh, first one being uh, color coded scatter plots so before uh, we uh, do some uh, before we create some of the color coded scatter plots let's understand the uh, color schemes in r uh, in r so uh, there is this function palette which can actually help us understand the default uh, you know color scheme uh, for r in r if we run this uh, particular function you can see uh, different colors are depicted here black red green three green three blue uh, cyan all these uh, colors are defected so therefore for any uh, uh, whenever in any function we use the color argument for example in this plot this color argument has been used so these uh, these uh, particular these particular colors would be picked up in that order so for you know uh, first time a black would be picked for different coloring uh, red would be picked for the third uh, different uh, separate coloring green three uh, would be picked so this particular color scheme is going to be used uh, to have uh, different colors in your plots uh, if you if you want to change this particular uh, this particular uh, color scheme you can do that for example rainbow 6 uh, this is one function that can actually change your palette scheme uh, so you can pass on this argument in the function you can again check the values let's uh, rerun palette you can see now the this color scheme has changed to uh, rainbow six red yellow green and these colors so uh, right now we'll stick to uh, the default scheme so let's uh, reset it now you will see the default scheme is there you can recheck it you can see it is back black red green three now uh, let's create uh, a color coded scatter plot so this is uh, this plot we are uh, going to create between the variable age and kil uh, and kilometers km uh, so uh, color is again color is uh, using so the color feature that we are using this is uh, for the uh, this uh, categorical price variable so uh, for different groups of uh, this variable we have two groups uh, in this variable in this categorical variable 0 and 1 so for these those two different groups different colors are going to be used so the, the points that are going to be plotted between age and K, uh, age and uh, km so uh, for different groups different colors would be used so let's run the uh, these two lines so range is 210 so appropriately specified in the plot uh, function let's run you can see the plot you can see uh, two colors black and red uh, as we have already seen that black and red are the first and two, uh, second option so black has been used for the group 0 and the red has been used for the group 1 right so uh, uh, you can see this particular uh, plot so here uh, we can have that three dimensional field like we have two variables km in the y axis and age in the x axis and we can see the relationship between km and age in this particular scatter plot as the age of a vehicle is more the number of uh, kilometers accumulated are of course going to be on the higher side but you can also see that uh, the red uh, points are on the higher side slightly on the higher side there are few red points on the lower side so uh, therefore we can understand that uh, that uh, that categorical price where the uh, you know which were assigned as one which means uh, which were assigned uh, which were having value more than four lakh equal to or more than four lakhs uh, they have accumulated uh, more kilometers so those cars are being used uh, more often so that three third dimension is being depicted using color in this case uh, now uh, 
another another uh, kind of multi dimensional uh, visualization that we can create is multiple panel so we can create multiple panels each uh, separate panel for each group so let's uh, go to one example so this particular uh, example is uh, uh, being done using uh, three variables so essentially we are uh, trying to create uh, essentially we are trying to create bar plot and uh, this bar plot is between this bar bar plot is mainly between price and age uh, and then the different panels are going to be used uh, depending on the transmission so for different transmission uh, different panels are going to be used so one panel for transmission uh, 0 and one panel for another panel for transmission 1 and the main bar plot is between price and age where age uh, is being used on the x axis so therefore it has to be categorical so therefore we need to create a cat we need to convert age into a categorical variable so let us start with that so age groups is the variable that uh, is the categorical variable that we are going to uh, create out of uh, this age variable so you can see as dot factor and uh, you can see uh, age is already a factor but uh, to be sure this has this particular function has been used so we are extracting the labels labels is the function which can be used uh, on a categorical variable to extract the uh, labels different labels that are there in a in a particular in a particular uh, variable so let's uh, so age was a numerical variable so in this case uh, as dot factor has been used to convert into a factor variable then it will have labels and labels function can be used to get uh, to retrieve those labels so let's do that so age groups has been created you can see different labels 2 3 4 5 so uh, different uh, uh, cars with different ages uh, uh, have now uh, now have been you know clubbed into different uh, groups so again uh, this is for our uh, this is for coming you know further computation that we need to create this particular variable so we need to have uh, uh, you know we need to run a loop later you can see for loop is there so for that we need this age groups too which uh, can help us in running through all the different age groups so let's run then we are going to create uh, average price for each uh, transmission group transmission 0 and transmission 1 so for that we uh, have uh, created these two variable uh, average price 1 and average price 2 so let's initiate them initialize them once the initialization is is been run so for each age uh, group uh, for each age group we are going to run this particular uh, loop and uh, we are going to uh, uh, create these two variables we are going to fill feed data into these two variables these two variables average price 1 and average price 2 that is depending on that for transmission 0 and for uh, you know all the groups for the transmission 0 and all the groups and for each group we are going to create an average price similarly for transmission 1 and for each uh, age group we are going to uh, compute the average price so let's run this particular loop so once this uh, loop is uh, done now uh, there could be uh, uh, some uh, groups where average price cannot be computed because uh, for you know that combination did not match for transmission one some of the uh, some of the age groups there was uh, there were uh, there were no data no uh, record similarly for uh, different uh, transmission group transmission zero uh, there might be some age groups where uh, there were no records so in those cases uh, this nan would be automatically uh, uh, you know assigned uh, in r so therefore we need to convert them to zero so once this is done uh, we can uh, now uh, because we want to create uh, different uh, two panels so in this case par is the command that can be used and you can see mf row is the argument so we want to uh, create uh, uh, two rows and one column right so we want to create two uh, two panels and uh, the x axis is going to be the same so therefore one column and the uh, there are going to be two panels and on y axis so two and cex is again 0.6 this is actually for the uh, uh, labeling and, and the uh, this is actually for all the uh, numbers that are going to be depicted so default is 1 and 0.6 is so we are scaling down the sizes of all all the all the uh, points all the uh, numbers and uh, text that is there margin or uh, you already know this is outer margin this is also specified here so let's run this command 
that is how we look at the range because we are going to require that in bar plot. So, once the range is you can see uh, from these two we can see that between 0 to 9 if we have a, a 0 to line 9 limit it would be covered. So, let us uh, plot this. Let us create a box legend trans 0 and then uh, another uh, the name of the y axis then second plot box name of the x axis and legend. Now, you can see this lot has been created. So, these are the two panels. You can see uh, the scale for x axis is same because the same variable is being used on the x axis. Uh, but uh, in the y axis the variable is same, but uh, the average price for different groups could be different. So, therefore, but still because we have used the uh, same range. So, therefore, uh, these two uh, panels can actually be compared uh, value by value. So, therefore, you can see that uh, most of the uh, most of the you know uh, vehicles in different age group right and having a transmission 0, they are around 4 lakh average price right. Uh, for some age groups it is slightly slower as we uh, move further uh, this average price goes down till this particular age group age group 8 and then again uh, for age group 9 and 10 it is uh, increasing maybe the cars uh, were uh, of the higher showroom price. If we look at the uh, transmission one so these are automatic cars. So, the uh, average uh, price for these cars is slightly on the higher side right more than 5 or closer to 6 right. So, the automatic cars uh, of course, they are going to be a bit costlier. So, therefore, used cars are, are also going to be on the higher side they are also going to be costly. So, that is uh, reflected in this uh, particular graphic and but it, as the age increases you can see there is you know slight you know decrease as the age of a car is increasing some of course, some abrasions are there, but that is the general sense. So, we will uh, today we will stop here and we will continue our discussion on some more uh, some more visualization techniques in the next session. Thank you.